Okay, so today's our last session in this 240 course, and what we are going to be covering is ADRO, Adaptive Dynamic Range Optimization. We have started this entire semester's course, Compression and Digital Features. The first half we did compression. We talked linear, WDRC, and all that until the midterm. After the midterm, you had all kinds of digital features, automatic feedback, reduction, expansion, compression as it's used on digital hearing aids. We covered digital noise reduction, directional microphones, all that good stuff, compared the clinical benefits of each and all that rot. And now we're coming around the corner full circle back to where we began, and we're talking about a hearing aid that uses linear processing. It doesn't use compression. And that hearing aid is called ADRO, Adaptive Dynamic Range Optimization. It was invented by a guy in Australia, Peter Blamey, B-L-A-M-E-Y, Blamey, Blamey. Blame it on him, okay? He lives in Melbourne, Australia, and he invented ADRO first for use in cochlear implants for people who are quite literally stone deaf. And later on, its use was expanded into hearing aids. Now, no manufacturer sells ADRO except ADRO. And ADRO in the United States is sold at Sam's Club. That's the only place that sells it. But many people who graduate from OTC work at Sam's Club. And when you work at Sam's Club, that's the hearing aid you're generally fitting is ADRO. And it comes out of Australia. So you're fitting an Aussie hearing aid. I'm kind of amazed that the manufacturers actually did not buy into ADRO. But it's very unique. And I'd just like to finish a course in compression talking about this very different hearing aid, like totally different scene. Let's check it out. We'll go into the PowerPoint that we've got. There's two things I have in ADRO in your folder, and one of them is the PowerPoint, and the other one is a PDF document, and I'll show it to you here. The PDF document, actually, if I scroll all the way up to the top of the screen, and if I go all the way to the top, the PDF document, go up here, come on, I know you can do it, all the way up, okay, <clears throat> is an article I wrote on ADRO a couple of years ago. It's about eight pages. And also, however, the last chapter of my textbook that you're likely using for this course, Compression for Clinicians, chapter 10, is also on ADRO. So have a look at that chapter. It puts it in English. And this article here is an article that I wrote before I wrote the chapter in my book on chapter 10. So this article was written a couple of years ago, and chapter 10 was written actually, well, April this year, because my book came out in April 2017. At any rate, they are essentially saying the same thing. Adaptive dynamic range optimization, quite a mouthful, but the alternative is an alternative to WDRC, and that's what the title of this PDF document is. In the textbook, the chapter, I don't even know what it's called. I think it's just called ADRO, but at any rate, because I don't have the book in front of me, but I'll now go to the PowerPoint slides because those are always a little more juicy, a little more fun, a little more colorful, and I'll highlight this first slide and we'll talk about it. All right, and again, that, that black bar at the top always bugs me, but uh, we've had lots to do with compression, but is linear processing really so bad? No, not as long as it's not peak clipping. Remember we talked about linear hearing aids and peak clipping? We said as long as the maximum power output isn't saturating. What was that again? Well, remember linear gain? It was a 45 degree angle. 20 dB input increase, 20 dB output increase. If the gain was 60 dB, then 0 in was 60 out, 10 in was 70 out, 20 in was 80 out, 30 in was 90 out, but by gum, the gain was 60. Okay? So that's what linear amplification would be. Okay? Until the output would get to be too much. 
And then you had what they call saturation, and you didn't want that. So let me just see if I can find a picture of good. Here's, here's a picture of some, some linear gain, if you take a peek here. These 45-degree angle lines, you know, either more linear gain, or I should say less linear gain, or more linear gain, and then you had some maximum power output, that flat line. That's where the hearing aid said, no more output. And so literally, the speaker of the hearing aid, the receiver is literally slapping the walls because you're, it's putting out so much. And that's just absolute distortion. And so when a hearing aid is peak clipping, in this example, it was set at 120 dB. You didn't want any more output than that. Then the hearing aid said absolutely no more output. And you were into peak clipping country. And the hearing aid literally sounded like, I'm calling you from the bottom of the swimming pool. Hello, how are you? So that sounded terrible. Okay. So. But if the hearing aid wasn't peak clipping, the linear gain sounded clean with no caffeine, man. Perfect. Read with me here. Actually, linear processing sounds quite clean and crisp as long as the hearing aid isn't peak clipping. Compression, in contrast, now read below, compression requires knee points ratios, attack times, release times, and all of these acting together in separate channels can cause distortion. Well, that's what you're trying to get away from, but guess what? You got it with compression too, not quite to the degree of peak clipping, but you still have it. Well, how about using linear processing as much as possible? In other words, don't resort to compression at all. Just use more linear gain or less linear gain, but always keep it linear. In other words, don't just have linear gain below some knee point or between two knee points, but use linear gain all the time until the output becomes either, and look at the bottom of the slide here, inaudible, that's one category, or too loud. Okay? So keep the gain linear and change it on only when the output becomes too soft or too loud. So here we go. Almost everyone offers the following solution. Typical WDRC. And you'll recall this picture from way earlier on in the semester. Typical WDRC offering most amplification for soft sounds. So here's the general scene with sensory neural loss, isn't it? You have your decibels from zero to 100. You have your perception of those decibels, so you're looking at the red line, the red diagonal line for normal hearing, and for normal hearing, 50 sounds comfortable, 10 to 20 sounds too soft, 90 to 100 sounds too loud, and then we said outer hair cell damage leads to a moderate sensory neural loss, so now you're looking at the light blue line here. And the light blue line says, oh, the person can't hear until 50. So now 50 or 60 sounds very soft, and yet 100 sounds too loud. And so where you've got that yellow circle, we call that recruitment. And in English, that just means loud sounds, 100 dB sounds just as loud to someone with normal hearing as it does for someone with sensory neural loss. And so what does WDRC do? It looks at the white arrows. It amplifies soft sounds by a lot, average inputs by less, and loud inputs by little or nothing at all. So WDRC imitates the outer hair cells by amp amplifying soft sounds, especially sounds below 50 dB, and giving less and less gain for average inputs and still less gain for loud inputs. All right, that's typical, but ADRO offers a different solution. Linear gain. And look what it says here. It gives the same amplification to soft, average, and loud sound inputs. But here's what it does. It concentrates on the average loudness of conversational speech. In other words, it doesn't try to pick up all of speech. It focuses on the center of speech. We'll see a little bit more what that means. This is where most cues for understanding speech are located. So first of all, 
Mark this down. It looks at the inputs of average speech and it concentrates on the average loudness. And then it concentrates on, it changes the amount of its linear gain over time. And it places this output information into the listener's dynamic range. So look at what it says here again, the four points. It focuses on the average inputs of speech, not the softest parts of speech, not the loudest parts, just the middle. And this is because this is where most of the speech cues are located. And then it changes its linear gain over time, depending on the listener's needs. You've binked this all into the computer. And then it places the output, it uses linear gain, focusing on the input of the average inputs of speech, using linear gain to make an output that sits nicely in the listener's dynamic range. The decibel distance between his ceiling and his floor. Okay, and that's why it's called adaptive dynamic range optimization. So here's your speech sounds on an audiogram. Let's just review. This is all from way back when. Have a look-see. Note how vowels and voice sounds are relatively loud and low-pitched, while soft, unvoiced consonants are relatively soft and high-pitched. And you'll notice that English has five vowels. Every word has a vowel. We have thousands of words, so vowels don't define words. We've seen this as all old hat. Okay, high-pitched consonants define what the word was. Cat, hat, fat, sat, chat, tin, fin, sin, thin, chin, okay. Adro preserves this at natural relationship. And here's what WDRC, however, does. So Adro keeps this stuff. WDRC, now look at the top waveform. This is unaided speech. Now read what it says here in the middle of the slide. The top sound wave represents an example of a sentence spoken at an average conversational loudness level. The peaks are the loudest, and, the and so those would be the vowels, okay? And the valleys are the softer parts, namely the unvoiced consonants, like s, f, t, ch, ch, all the high-pitched sounds. So look at the sound wave. Remember, on the left, you're starting, and it might just be, my father can beat your father at checkers. It's just saying a sentence. And the louder parts are the peaks. The softest parts are the high-frequency consonants. Remember, waveforms don't show frequency very well. Waveforms, it's time along the horizontal, amplitude on the vertical, and frequencies all just buried inside, okay? So looking at WDRC, here's your sentence. This is the input, we call it unaided speech. And here's what, at, what WDRC does. Because WDRC is doing this, look at this, because it's amplifying the soft sounds by a lot, and loud sounds by little or nothing at all, look what it's doing to the waveform. It's amplifying the soft parts by a lot, so follow my cursor, down, okay? But it's amplifying the loud parts by not very much. So it's focusing on the valleys, the soft parts, because that's exactly what WDRC does. So what is it doing to the waveform of input speech? It's degrading it. It's decreasing the peak to valley contrasts. It's not keeping this nice relationship between the loudness of the different letters of speech. Because WDRC is amplifying the softest parts by the most. And look, here's the loudest parts of unaided speech. WDRC isn't hardly amplifying that at all. WDRC is taking the softest parts, and that's where it's focusing its amplification. So you, you are degrading the peak to valley contrasts of the waveform. So when you look at unaided speech, and then what WDRC does to it, read what the bottom says. The bottom sound represents the same sentence amplified with WDRC. Note how the overall sound wave is amplified, but the peak to valley contrast is decreased. 
WDRC does this because it's amplifying soft sounds by a lot and louder sounds by less. So now let's look at ADRO. Next slide. Now the top waveform is identical. See the top waveform here? It's the same one as, the, as over here, okay? The difference is what ADRO is doing to it. So here's unaided speech, and now look at aided speech with ADRO. You've, you've made it larger, but you've preserved the peak to valley contrasts. Note the bottom wave here, and note the bottom wave here. See the difference. The bottom sound wave represents the same sound sentence amplified with ADRO, and note how the overall wave is amplified, and also the natural peak to valley contrast is preserved. So now here's the speech sound wave, okay, and here's the speech spectrum. So now you have the two ways of representing sound. Remember, sound takes place in three dimensions, intensity, frequency, and time. And a sound wave has time and amplitude on it, time on the horizontal, amplitude on the vertical. And notice how there's about a 30 decibel range. In other words, the loudest parts of average speech are 30 dB louder than the softest parts of average speech, okay? So 30 dB, there's a 30 dB range. So if I'm speaking to you at average conversational listening level, which is like 65 dB SPL, the loudest parts of my speech generally at 65 are, are about 30 dB louder than the softest parts of my speech. Well, let's now take a slice out of this wave. See this wave of my cursor here? Let's just take a slice out of this bread. Just take a slice and turn it sideways. So now you can see the raisins inside the, the, the slice of bread. Okay, here's your loaf of bread. I'm taking a slice out of it. I'm turning it sideways. Now you can see the spectrum. And the spectrum shows frequency along the horizontal and amplitude on the vertical again. Once again, amplitude is spoiled. It's on both the, 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 the waveform and the, the spectrum. But note that the spectrum doesn't show time. Okay, the spectrum is like a frequency response of a hearing aid. Anyway, have a look at the spectrum now. Once again, there's a 30 dB dynamic range. The loudest parts versus the softest parts. And let's say the average is 65. Well, then the loudest parts might be 75 and the smallest, the loud, softest parts might be 45. Interesting, you might ask, and this is kind of an aside, how come the average isn't right in the center? How come this average here? is a little bit closer to the top than it is to the bottom. And the reason why is, as we discussed last week and the week before, speech is very staccato. As a, as a noise, it changes rapidly in intensity over time. Look at the wave on the top. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so unlike a fan or an air conditioner, the intensity of speech fluctuates like crazy over time, and in statistics that ends up showing that the average, the mean average, will not be centered in the middle of the range. Okay, but needless to say, whether you're showing sound as a waveform or whether you're showing sound as a spectrum, okay, either way, speech has about a 30 decibel range in its loudness. If the overall average is 65, it's not, oh, at 65, I'm not speaking completely at 65 all the time. If the overall average is 65, there's times when the loud, it's 75, there's times when it's 55 and 45, so generally there's a 30 decibel range overall at any speech level. That's what I'm trying to get at. And ADRO focuses, mark this well, ADRO focuses, follow my cursor, on the average. ADRO doesn't care so much about the top. ADRO doesn't care so much about the bottom. It's focusing on the middle because that's where most of the speech cues are. And it started out in in cochlear implants, it's now in some hearing aids. Typical compression, as we've covered before, the gain is adjusted with fixed knee points and ratios. ADRO doesn't do that. It looks at outputs, 
and it applies rules to these outputs. And we'll take a look at that. The two rules are written below. Here they are, audibility. So you're entering the client's audiogram into the software, just like you're doing with NOAA, just like you're doing with Real Ear, okay? But with ADRO, it automatically calculates what's the audibility criterion for that client. And it also calculates what's the comfort criterion for that client in terms of loudness, okay? So it says this. It says 90% of aided outputs better stay below some predetermined loudness level. Otherwise, it's too loud. And look at the audibility criterion. It says 30% of aided outputs better... If they bet can be less than some predetermined loudness level. And if they if it's more than 30% is below audibility, uh-uh, you need more gain. If 10% is above some level, uh-uh, you need less linear gain. So it's always fluctuating. ADRO is shown here on an input-output function. Let's go back to where we started in this course. Look at this graph here. Make sure we understand from earlier on in the semester, okay? Here's linear gain. I'm showing you one 45-degree angle line. Here's another linear gain, a second parallel one. Recall which one has the most gain, okay? The right one has the least. So let's just look at why that's the case. 60 in, follow my cursor, would be 90 out. What's the gain there? 30. Okay, now look at the next, the, the blue line that's here. 60 in would be 110 out. What's the gain? 50. So remember, as the diagonal line moves left or right, the gain is changing. The linear gain is changing. And remember the trick from the beginning of the semester. The rightmost line is the least linear gain. The leftmost line is more. It's backward to what you would think. Okay, so we, we did this early in the, on the, in the semester, but this is important for looking at ADRO because this is what ADRO is going to do. It's going to do this and this, this. And this, but by gum, it's never going to do compression. It's not doing compression. It's not into it. It's going to stay linear, but it's going to offer less linear gain or more linear gain. That's the rub of ADRO. Greater and lesser amounts of linear gain are provided depending on the listener's sound environments. In loud environments, the hearing aid automatically will shift to less linear gain. In soft listening environments, more linear gain. The focus is always on the listener's comfort. So ADRO looks at rules. So here is, this is kind of a weird graph, but stick with me here. Here's your output levels in any one channel. So let's just say you have a many channel digital hearing aid. Pick one channel. Eh, we'll choose this one. All right, that channel. Just as an example, what's the DBSPL output in that channel? Okay, is it a little bit? Is it average? Is it a lot? And then how much, how, what percent of time is the output here? What percent of time is the output here? What percent of the time is the output here? And again, think of grades in a classroom. A's, B's, C's, and D's. And how many students got those grades? And here you have a bell curve. Okay, just showing you how many times on the vertical Someone got this amount. Okay, so ADRO, based on the audiogram that you've entered into the software, it's going to come up with an audibility boundary and a comfort boundary, just like we described here. Okay, what we described here, audibility criterion, comfort criterion. Those are seen by these two blue vertical lines. So it's going to say, hey man, if the output gets softer than this level, 30% of the time, increase the linear gain. And if the output gets more than this level, okay, more than this, decrease the linear gain. All right? And if it gets more than this level, 10%, 90, it's got to, most of the output, it's got to stay below this particular output 90% of the time. If it doesn't, we've got to decrease the gain. 
And if the output stay is, is falls below this output 30% of the time, increase the gain. So it's always sliding. You're getting either less or more linear gain. So typical WDRC is going to be saying, oh, here's linear gain for soft inputs. And then we offer a low knee point, remember that, and a low compression ratio. And so what's happening here is most linear gain is offered for soft inputs and progressively less and less gain is offered for louder and louder inputs. That's typical WDRC. Read what it says here. Linear gain, knee point, two to one ratio. Once adjusted, it's fixed, okay? With input changes, the gain only follows the function. Now look at ADRO. ADRO has a weird input-output function, really strange. Look at it. It's got a comfort boundary and the audibility boundary. So what happens here? Here you got real soft input. So let's say the input is like 30 dB, okay? And the output's going to be 70. So what's the gain? 40. Okay, 40 in, 80 out. What's the gain? 40. And now 50 in. You're going to get 90 out. What's the gain? 40. But now the inputs increase, and here you're saying, hey, man, now you're exceeding that comfort boundary. You're, 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 you're blowing the rules here. I'm exceeding this comfort boundary. You can't do that. <gasps> Let's decrease the linear gain. Now it's to the right. So now, okay, you've got now less linear gain. And now the inputs begin to decrease. Look at this on my cursor. The inputs get less and less and less and less. <gasps> now the output is falling below the audibility target set for that client. Oops, better increase the linear gain. So now you did. Remember the left Where do you get that? Where do you get the... Um information is this a is this a software within the adro yep, that you're this, putting this these is, in or are you using the ldls to get that comfort boundary i'm going to show you how it's really neat okay the basically though you're using less linear gain or more linear gain depending on whether you are blowing the targets away blowing the the, the, the boundaries according to the rules so basically here's how adro is fit Check this out. Most hearing aids are fit with NAL2 or DSL5 or something, and they use math applied to the, to the audiometric thresholds. And these methods assume comfort as relative to the thresholds because they're, they're based on the audiogram that you've entered into NOAA. Okay? ADRO has a completely different approach. It's client-centered. So check this out. The listener makes loudness judgments with hearing aids in place. So you've got the hearing aids in the ear, and you're programming the hearing aids on the ADRO software, and you're doing it either by hardwire or by Bluetooth, same as regular hearing aids, and the client makes subjective loudness judgments by listening to four different frequency chimes. So check this out. You'll hear five. Look at this. Low frequency, a higher frequency, a higher one, a higher, and a higher one. E, so what you're doing is you want to make sure A is comfortable, and then you want to say, hey, is B also, is it just, does it sound just as loud as A? And C, does it sound just as loud as B and A? If so, make sure they're all comfortable like Goldilocks. Are, do you like them? Are they right at your comfort range? Cool. All right, now let's make C, D, and E equally loud, nice and comfortable. So now all five frequencies are really nice and comfortably loud. And then you want to balance the loudness between the ears. You run through a sequence in the left ear. You run through a sequence in the right ear. Is one ear a little bit louder? Uh-oh, adjust it to make, to make sure everything is even, Stephen. The loudness judgments are then used. So now you've entered that in the software. So now the, here, the software automatically calculates what's the maximum output you ever want the hearing aid to produce. And what's the comfort target? 
What's that going to be? In other words, what output is this going to be here? What is that going to be? And then it also calculates the audibility target. Okay, how soft can the outputs possibly be? All right, right there. So you've got your soft output, your loudest output. It's all determined by the software, but based on the listener's loudness judgments to these chimes. It's really weird. I've never seen a software like this. It's totally different. And then you have your maximum gain. So you'll have your comfort target, audibility target, maximum gain, maximum output level, all of this stuff. So the comfort target is the leader. The maximum power output is for hearing protection to protect against sudden bang loud sounds. The comfort target is the leader. It predicts this maximum power output target. And it also predicts this one. It, 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 based on this anchor, the yellow one is chosen and the red one is chosen. And then the maximum gain is determined by your audiogram that you've entered. So now we don't need to memorize any of this. Believe me, I'm not going to ask you this on a final. I'm just, we're just talking. This is just kind of interesting how this works. And then some words about maximum output level and maximum gain. Now, generally, in, on the average, maximum output level is set, set about 10 to 15, you know, above the com comfort target. It acts really quickly if the loud, you know, sudden attack release times, if, if it becomes too loud, it suddenly kicks in. You don't even adjust it. Just let the software pick it. You don't touch it. The maximum gain prevents soft background sounds from being over amplified, controls feedback, has a big effect on sound quality, addresses the occlusion effect. It's based on the audiogram that you've entered. So Adro compares the output level with the comfort and audibility targets in each channel, as we've said. So it's really these guys are really acting in concert. The comfort rule, read this, will decrease the output level in a channel if it exceeds the comfort target more than 10% of the time. The audibility rule will increase the output level in a channel if it falls below the audibility target 30% of the time. So basically, WDRC, on the other hand, becomes very complicated because it provides most amplification for soft sounds, and we've seen that because it does this, it distorts input sound waves. It has a fixed knee point where compression begins, a fixed ratio, and those are fixed. They don't change. You set them and buy gum. That's what that's the hearing aid is going to act according to those. Sound environments, however, change over time, and guess what? WDRC then has to rely on different programs constantly and as you may have noticed in your in your labs and when fitting software how many times have you looked at Bernafon or Oticon or Unitron all these on ons and wide X and all the different companies and each of them has multi-channel hearing aids but they also have different programs so you've got to sit there with program one for listening in quiet program two for listening in noise program three for music program four maybe for telephone so the clients walking around with a remote control choosing among different programs and you and I are beginning to learn that most of our clients can't figure this out for love nor money because they're having trouble putting the batteries in their hearing aids okay so this is what gets to be rather complicated and that's why if you think agro is complicated the idea is to make it simple. We've got, we've got WDRC with handheld devices, lots of, of, of client frustration, which becomes a drag. Here's your frequency responses in, in typical WDRC. Okay, Here might be your listening in quiet program. Here might be your listening and noise program. See, you've decreased the lows, increased the highs, because most background noise is low frequency. Look at the dotted line. That might be for music, because music is mostly, do, 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 do. it's mostly low frequency. So look at this. You've increased your gain for music. So the listener chooses among these different programs, okay, because you've got one fixed 
compression system happening in all environments and that if you set that knee point at whatever you've done so if you go to typical wdrc you fixed that knee point you fixed that ratio and that by gum that's the way the hearing aid's going to handle all listening environments well then you need lots of different programs in order to handle the difficulties in different listening situations Adro doesn't. Let's see. Pictures talk louder than words. Here's a normal dynamic range. Okay? Pictures talk louder than words. So here's a group of people. By the way, this is Peter Blamey sitting here <laughs> in Australia. And they're sitting around a table. Now look at the dynamic range. Let's pretend this is loud on the top and the bottom. Pretend that's really soft. So what happens with hearing loss? The bottom is cut off, right? You can't hear below 50. So let's say this is zero on the bottom and 100 at the top. With sensory neural loss, now you've lost the bottom. You can only hear from 50 or above. The listener can't hear the bottom half of soft sound. The floor of hearing sensitivity is elevated, as you can see here. While the ceiling of loudness tolerance hasn't changed, it's that same picture you've, know, you've seen with the graph doing this stuff, okay? Here's what WDRC is going to do. It's going to squeeze the top and the bottom of the sound input. It's going to do this. It's going to take this, and it's going to lift that bottom halfway up. So if this is the scene that the listener has because he's got hearing loss, WDRC to answer the call is going to do this. So look at how distorted that is. Look at how the people are all flattened out. That's the waveform losing its peak to valley contrasts. Adrel, on the other hand, would do this. It's going to focus on the middle. Remember, look a couple slides back. Look at the middle. Okay, don't look at the top so much, and don't look at the bottom so much. Focus on the center of this picture. So ADRO, because it's operating on a linear fashion all the time, and because it's focusing on the center of average speech, not on the range, not on the top, and not on the bottom, w, if, a, if a listener loses the bottom half of his hearing, WDRC is going to answer the call by amplifying soft sounds by a lot and loud sounds by little or nothing at all. So ADRO, I mean, WDRC is going to do this. And so now you've got the whole picture. Look at this. You can still see the roof. You can still see the bottom of the chairs, but it's all squished. Whereas ADRO will do this. So you can't see the ceiling anymore. Here's the, see, look at the difference. It's focusing on the middle. It places the most important part of the sound input so that it can fit into the listener's reduced dynamic range. If I stop sharing here, or if I go to the power to the uh, the PDF document, look at what I'll show you something at the very end of this document here. A few years ago, my better half and I went to Iceland, and we were flying to Iceland, and in front of our seat, it said. Your seat is Sadith Bit or whatever in Icelandic. And after you have sat down, it's called Sadith Mit, my seat, whatever. But look at the writing. Here's normal input dynamic range. This is the same kind of pictures as we showed with those people sitting around the table. Okay, same thing, only mine. So here you got normal input dynamic range. Reduced dynamic range. So now the person can't hear the soft sounds. So what does WDRC do? It does this. It, it takes this former picture here and amplifies the soft sounds by a lot, but the loud sounds by little or nothing at all, and in so doing, it squeezed it. So this looks squished. And again, it's distorted. But if you look at what ADRO does, it does this. So look at the difference. Okay, you focus now on the middle, and I'm highlighting that because if I go back three slides, the center is the writing. Okay, it's right in the middle of the slide. 
So while WDRC does that, WD, uh, ADRO does this. It doesn't care about the very, whoops, the very top here and the very bottom there. It's focusing on taking the middle part and making sure that's sitting properly inside your dynamic range, your remaining dynamic range. And that's the idea behind ADRO. It works all the time on a linear fashion, though. It never uses compression. It either uses less linear gain or more linear gain. A totally different scene. And I wanted to finish the course with a brief description of this re weird hearing aid. And I know that OTC gets a lot of grads that end up working at Sam's Clubs. It's often called <clears throat> HLT, Hearing Lab Technology, HLT. I don't know, have you ever heard of HLT in your, in your, in, from other students? Well, there it is. That's the hearing aid that they sell. So it's have a read of chapter 10, have a look at that last chapter in the book, or ch take a look at the eight page PDF document. And after this uh, particular Zoom session, just, just you know, look at it briefly as a review or whatever, but it's kind of an interesting, a different kind of a format. And I just wanted people to be familiar with the fact that it is out there. And here's this, here's something what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share. Is this the same? Go ahead. Is this the same? It's the same company that's in Costco, right? But they fit Adro also in the Costco? I don't believe Costco does. Nope. I don't believe Costco or sells Adro at all. CBS. Oh, okay. I don't think they do. Costco, the only outlet that I know of is Sam's Club. It's uh, and it's made okay. by it's it's imported by a company called Hearing Lab Technology, and HLT. I thought HLT was in the Costco's or the CVS's oh, yeah. or somewhere else as well. I don't okay. unless they're selling another different kind of hearing aid. But the Adro one to me is not sold at Costco. But uh, or you can always ask to be to to verify. And Maybe that's specific. changed since last year, but not to the best of my knowledge. One thing we were going to describe, and that has been often shown in compression, and I'm going to make that one smaller and blow this one here up. Many Remember when we were learning about compression and we described how a lot of hearing aid companies are putting linear back in again for average speech? So look at this as typical. This is a non-adro hearing aid. This is what typical WDRC hearing aids are doing today. You've got linear gain for really soft inputs, then you have WDRC for average inputs, and then for slightly louder than average, you're back to linear gain. Look at that white and this white. They're both 45 degree angles. Oticon is doing this. They call it speech guard. And they're doing it to overcome the complaint. I hear people better at tables further away than I do the person across the seat from me. And we've all described why that is the case. Because WDRC is amplifying soft sounds by a lot and louder sounds by less. So the person across the seat, the table from you, is louder. So WDRC is amplifying that person less and the people further away are softer. And it's amplifying them more. So what's the solution to it? A lot of hearing aids have gone back to linear gain for those situations. So guess what? They're imitating ADRO. In a way, they're using linear gain again. And then once the output gets to be too much, they're into output limiting compression. ADRO just says, forget that. Just use either less linear gain or more linear gain and change the amounts of linear gain depending on the comfort target and the audibility target. And those two targets are set by the listener's loudness judgment of these five weird chimes. Just strange, just these weird ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so it's not using now, it's not using DSL, it's just using a loudness judgment, it's trying to make all these things even and steven in loudness and comfortable. And once you've done that, all these different things are calculated by the software. You're not changing these. These are calculated by the software. And then based especially on the green and the yellow, these are the two most important ones. 
the comfort target and the audibility target. Those puppies are the ones that are the most important, and they change the amount of linear gain being offered. So it's according to those. How are, those, how are the automatic gains and the automatic decreases figured over? Is that an average over 30 days or over a week? Or how is that adjusted if you're not meeting those targets? I'm not sure I know what you mean. I'm not sure. What, what, you you yeah. said that if it's not meeting its target by, you know, 30% of the time, then it's automatically adjusted. Or if yes. it's not meeting the loudness targets 90% of the time, then it's mm -hmm. automatically adjusted. How That's is right. that? Is that a pro program within that? And is it figured weekly, monthly, no, no, daily? It's, a, it's constantly updating. The, those targets are built into the hearing aid or, or are saved onto the software of the hearing aid. And then the hearing aid is so automatically it's changing. It, it's changing based during speech on, or all situation. All situations. Just it's really you're asking a good question, but we need to focus on. Let's just look at the slide here again because it's uh, this is a trip. It's totally. So I'm going to go back to this here. Okay, here's your here's output: soft, average, loud. Okay, how many? What percent of the time is the output here? or here, or here, or here. So you've entered because you've had the client listen to these weird chimes, and you had the person balance the loudness between the hearing aids, so everything's set, just like Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just right. Okay, save. So you've saved into the hearing aid, so automatically, thump, thump, two different rules are built in, in the software, so now, if the output falls below, and I don't put numbers here, I'm just giving you the example, the concept. If the outputs fall below this level, 30% of the time, boom, increase the linear gain. If the outputs exceed this output level more than 10% of the time, boom, decrease the output. Okay? Decrease the linear gain. So the linear gain is going to change from less to greater. Less to greater based on these two boundary rules. And those boundary rules are set by what you, but the client has estimated in judgment. So the client has estimated and played around with these kind of loudness judgments. And now you've, you've set the hearing aid accordingly. Okay, so now the software does its work. So that's essentially how the, how the system works. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just trippy. It's just different. I don't know if I'm a huge automatic buyer believer in it, but I want grads from OTC to have a basic idea that this hearing aid is floating around out there and that there's a whole legion of HISs working out there that are fitting this hearing aid. And so those people are fitting hearing aids very differently than what you're being taught. You're being taught to fit according to now and blah, blah, blah. And you're taught about knee points and programs. And, but this kind of hearing aid is like hippy-dippy weird. It's just different. <laughs> so I just want people to have a passing awareness of some of its salient aspects, some of its features that way. So that's about it. I mean, I'm not going to go on further describing it because, to tell you the honest truth, I've never fit the hearing aid in my ding-dong life. <laughs> but I found it fascinating, and I find its ideas just different. It's kind of like the Tabasco. It's the hot sauce. It's kind of like, eh, that's a different approach. Okay. Clients apparently are quite happy with it. They quite like it. It's different. But uh, I don't know how many studies have been done to compare, like, what's the effectiveness of speech and noise and stuff. But the idea behind it is to get rid of the necessity for all these different programs. Because when you're fitting a hearing aid according to set knee points and ratios, well, now you've got to rely on different programs for diff to accommodate different listening situations. Whereas the ADRO hearing aid is always offering linear gain, but it's either offering more or less linear gain. And how much more or how much less is all dependent on the software. The software picks that out, but you've done the clinical 
estimating of the listener's subjective loudness to these weird chimes. And you've entered the audiogram, and then the software takes it from there, sets an audibility target, a comfort target, and then according to these rules, if, it, if they get violated, the gain changes. If this rule gets violated, the gain changes. Either way, those two rules are like two posts in a football field. The ball's got to go between those posts. If it doesn't go between those posts, there's no point. Anyway, that's Itsky Pitsky for the course. You done covered it. Yeah. So. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Any other questions that you have, Tina? You're the only listener. You've been my faithful uh, attendee for the last three weeks. The other people have not been able to attend, which is uh, well, fine as long as yeah. they listen to the recorded stuff. But you've already done it, so your work yeah. is done here. So anyway, it's been it's been nice. It's I uh, hope to see you again soon sometime. And good luck on that final. Yes. You're whizzed through it, I'm sure. Thank you. You're most Thank welcome. You. All right. Cheers. Have a good one.